Dodge Imperial bearings are adapter mount spherical roller bearings which incorporate a unique mounting and dismounting method. This revolutionary method is exclusive to the Dodge Imperial bearings and has been patented by Baldor. The different housing configurations available include 2-bolt pillow blocks, 4-bolt pillow blocks, 4-bolt flange units, piloted flange bearings, wide slot take-up bearings, and the split cap ISAF pillow block. All of these housing variations are available in expansion and non-expansion designs. We'll be mounting a 2 and 7 16 inch pillow block imperial bearing. The tools required to mount the imperial bearings include an Allen wrench, drift, hammer, marker, a micrometer, straight edge, and a torque wrench to tighten the base bolts once the bearing is mounted. Baldor also offers an Imperial Impact Spanner Wrench to simplify the installation process. Prior to bearing installation, inspect the shaft to ensure that it's smooth, straight, and clean. If a nick is found, remove the raised area with a file. Then use an emery cloth, sandpaper, or Scotch-Brite pad to clean corrosion and fine nicks from the shaft. Apply a thin coating of oil or other rust inhibitor to the mounting area of the shaft. Now ensure that the shaft is within commercial shaft tolerances. Due to our adapter mount design, standard commercial shafting tolerances can be used. This chart reflects the recommended tolerances. We'll be mounting a 2 and 7 16 inch imperial bearing which requires a shaft diameter of 2.4375 inches, plus zero, minus three thousandths of an inch. An instruction manual is supplied with each adapter mounted bearing and should be read prior to mounting. All applications require a two bearing system to operate properly. The Imperial product line is offered in both fixed and float or expansion. The fixed bearing should always be mounted first and is typically mounted on the drive side of the application. The float or expansion bearing is mounted last for positioning purposes. The bearing is equipped with a lock plate which is secured to the face of the lock nut. Remove the button head cap screws using the Allen wrench. Remove the lock plate and set it aside. We'll reinstall the lock plate after the bearing is mounted. All adapter mount bearings require load to be removed during mounting to ease bearing drive up and to minimize required mounting force. This can be done with a sling, jacks, or in our case using supports. While holding the adapter sleeve, rotate the lock nut counterclockwise one to two turns. This will allow the adapter to fully expand. Slide the bearing to the desired position on the shaft. If the bearing does not slide onto the shaft easily, loosen the lock nut another one to two turns and repeat the process. Now, the bearing lock nut needs to be tightened to its zero reference point or starting position. The zero reference point is defined as the point when the clearance between the adapter sleeve, shaft, and bearing bore is removed and all mating surfaces are in metal-to-metal -metal contact. This is achieved by tightening the lock nut clockwise using both hands until the lock nut can no longer be rotated by hand. As a test to ensure the zero reference point has been reached, tap on the OD of the nut with a hammer and attempt to rotate the nut using both hands. If the nut does rotate, the zero reference point has not been reached. Repeat this step. If the nut will not rotate, then the zero reference point has been reached. Once the zero reference point is achieved, mark a line on the face of the lock nut and adapter sleeve. It is good practice to mark the lock nut face in line with the slot on the adapter sleeve. Next, determine the appropriate amount of lock nut rotation required for mounting. This information is shown in the instruction manual supplied with the bearings. 
In the case of the 2 and 7 16 inch imperial bearing, the rotation of the lock nut from zero position is 1 to 1 and a quarter turn. Using a drift or imperial impact spanner and hammer, rotate the lock nut 1 to 1 and a quarter rotation from the marked zero reference point. Once the desired rotation is achieved, the bearing is mounted. Find a lock nut hole that aligns with the lock plate hole or slot. If the closest lock nut hole is beyond a lock plate hole, mark the adapter at the next closest lock plate hole. Tighten, not loosen, the lock nut to meet with the lock plate hole or slot. Next, put the lock plate on. Then insert the lock washer and button head cap screws through the lock plate into the lock nut holes. The fixed bearing has now been properly mounted to the shaft. To keep the housing in position, loosely install the base bolts. We'll now mount the float or expansion bearing. The float or expansion is mounted the same way as the fixed bearing. The only difference is positioning the housing with respect to the bearing to accommodate shaft growth due to thermal expansion and the movement of the bearing during installation. Follow the same mounting procedures as shown in the previous segment. Once the bearing has been properly mounted, it can now be attached to the mounting structure. Insert the base bolts into the float bearing, making sure the float housing has been shifted in the correct direction so it will accommodate shaft thermal growth. Remove shaft support. Next, make sure that the bearing housings are aligned by the use of a straight edge or laser. Torque the mounting bolts to their required torque values. The bearing assembly has now been properly mounted. To dismount the bearing, first loosen the base bolts. Now remove the load. Next, remove the button head cap screws and the lock plate. Now begin to rotate the lock nut counterclockwise using a drift or the Imperial Impact Spanner wrench and hammer. Continue to drive the lock nut counterclockwise until the bearing is released from the shaft. The bearing has now been properly dismounted. Grease fittings are supplied for each bearing for re-lubrication purposes. The bearings are pre-lubricated at the factory with lithium-based grease and should be re-lubricated with compatible grease. The standard grease fill out of the box is 30 to 40 percent full. Due to various operating conditions such as speed, temperature, and contamination levels, re-lubrication intervals vary. The instruction manual should be used as a reference guide. If it's safe to do so, bearings should be relubricated while in operation to equally distribute grease throughout the bearing and minimize the temperature rise which may occur during relubrication. A good rule of thumb is to slowly add grease until clean grease is seen purging past the bearing seal. Imperial bearing seals are designed to purge excess grease from the bearing as the internal bearing pressure increases. There will be a temperature rise which will be indicated by the aid of a thermocouple inserted in the bearing housing. As the excess grease and remaining grease is channeled and distributed throughout the bearing, the temperature will decrease and stabilize. We have accomplished two very important requirements to achieving long bearing life. First, we've introduced clean grease to the internal contacting surfaces of the bearing, which help to prevent bearing wear. Second, we've purged contaminated and deteriorated grease from the bearing. 
Dodge Imperial bearings can be converted from expansion to non-expansion and vice versa. Simply move the snap ring on the back side of the housing from the outside groove to the inside groove to switch from expansion to non-expansion. Do the opposite to convert from non-expansion to expansion. As you have seen, Dodge Imperial bearings offer you a high capacity double row spherical bearing with exclusive adapter mounting. Less fretting corrosion and vibration than set screw mounted bearings. Built in removal mechanism. Replaceable sealed inserts. And very effective sealing. Remember, if your bore sizes are 8 inches and larger, use the Dodge Hydraulic ISAF with its revolutionary hydraulic mounting and dismounting system. Some additional Dodge videos available for viewing are the Hydraulic ISAF and the Griptite ball bearing installation videos.